Hello. Hello. Am I speaking with Richard Robson? You are, yes. Professor Robson, this is Adam Smith calling from NobelPrize.org. First of all, congratulations on the Nobel Prize. Thank you. It is um, a day in which the world gets to celebrate chemistry and to reflect a little bit on the beauty of chemistry. And that's a lovely thing. I I agree, yeah. (laughs) And how do you feel about the news of the prize? Well, there are upsides and downsides, and um, I'm quite old now. And um, handling all the nonsense that's going to happen (laughs) is going to be hard work. (laughs) By nonsense, you mean... The the facility with words that I had uh, a quarter of a century ago has disappeared. So it's a bit of a struggle. Yeah. Um, Anyhow, this is a a taste of what's to come. (laughs) Um, What brought you to chemistry in the first place? What what was it that made you a chemist? Gee, that's a a difficult question. I I can't say I was particularly thrilled by it at the time. (laughs) I always felt sort of second rate for not being a mathematician. (laughs) I always thought of the uh, mathematics as the highest human activities. So, yeah, I sort of drifted into it. I, I couldn't think of anything better to do. <laughs> well, it seemed to work out. <laughs> yeah, it may very well not have done as well. But anyhow, you know, that's, that's life, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. Um, and I was very, I'm very struck by the fact that you say that um, everything that has arisen in this field was predictable, in a way, from your very... Well, not not the details, but the general sort of development. Yes, yeah, yeah, certainly it was very simple-minded stuff. I'm, you know, it, <laughs> it really was. <laughs> Still, it was a leap to think that you could build these net-like structures. Yes, and I must say that some people, well, at the time, that's in the middle eighties, it was a, a whole load of rubbish. <laughs> Anyhow, it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> and it was teaching. It was teaching molecular structure and building oh, models. Yeah, absolutely, yes. My job was to construct models of um, basic inorganic structures like sodium chloride and diamond and so on. And um, so I, I, had, I literally sat down with log tables <laughs> and had to figure out all the angles that the workshop, we had a workshop in those days of six or seven men. Workshops nowadays in in chemistry and physics departments have disappeared. Uh, So uh, I I literally with log tables calculated the angles at the workshop. Very skilled men had to drill the holes into these wooden balls and then construct a model and at the time, I'd been playing with organic ligands that bind two metal ions in close proximity, but leaving a gap where interesting things may or may not happen, or hmm. might or might not have happened, and, uh, and also ligands that bound four metal ions in very close proximity, and what effect would they have on species that became attached to them? So all of that was at the back of my mind. And as I was constructing these models, plugging metal rods of clearly defined dimensions into wooden balls with accurately drilled holes, the thought arose, what if we used molecules in place of the balls and chemical bonds in place of the rods? And everything else followed from that. (laughs) That was in 1974. And uh, so I had that idea and scribbled a few things down and then forgot about it until that area of chemistry came up in next year's lectures. You know, for a couple of lectures, we talk about solid state structures. Um, And uh, each year, I think that was not a bad idea. I ought to do something about it. But I didn't for the best part of 10 years. And then in somewhat of a state of desperation. I I, I did a lot of bench work myself. I started to try to make things that might polymerize with metal ions into structures in the middle 80s. And and the whole thing started to look very promising, but it it really was very common sense. 
It's fascinating, fascinating story. And, and also very interesting that you, you didn't let the thing drop. It's easy to have an idea and then not do anything with it. And even though it lay dormant yeah, for a while. Well, I kept being reminded of it each year <laughs> when these lectures came up. I thought, you know, I think I really ought to follow that up. Well. Um, and eventually I did. And How good that you did and what it's inspired. And again, coming back to this, although you don't seem to be surprised by how it took off, it is... Um, no, not at all. It was obvious it was going to happen. It's a different yeah. view. Of, it, it's, it's a lovely, refreshing view of innovation. Yeah, it's a, it, it needs a sort of obsessive individual neglecting other responsibilities, and uh, that's the way I was. That does seem to be a common feature of laureates, doesn't it? Or, or, or great scientists yeah, generally. Yeah, great yeah. people who achieve great things. Let's expand it to that. Some, some ability to shut other things out. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, that's quite right. Would you characterise yourself as the kind of the epitome of the lone scientist then? Yes, more or less, I think I would, yeah. That, that's not to say I haven't had people... Um, working with me who've been absolutely invaluable. I mean, I'm just, a, I just mix things up and get compounds, but um, the real science is numbers and angles and distant bond distances and things like that are things that I'd never achieved myself. And so the crystallographers I've worked with, Bernard Hoskins in particular, but Brendan Abrahams more recently, um, have given the whole area respectability that it wouldn't have had. Mm. And they're just nice guys as well, so that was good. Yes, well, hopefully the, the coming weeks will introduce you to some new nice people, so it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll work, work out nicely. I, I simply love your understatement that you just mix things up and get compounds. <laughs> that's, it's the truth. That's what I do, yeah. <laughs> and lots of them don't work. Yes, yes. Um, so you, you say a ray when they do. I suppose that's what young people have to learn in science. It, it sounds like your celebrations of this will be modest, but do you... Uh, I think that, that would be an understatement, <laughs> yes. I'm now 88, and, uh, you know, the, the people I knew pretty well when I was 25, 30 years ago are all dead or close to it like myself. It reminds me of a statement Noel Coward made once that somebody, I think it was Rafe Richardson, was saying to him, aren't you sad that all our friends are dying? And Noel Coward said, well, personally, dear boy, I'm delighted if my friends make it through lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, I, I liked uh, Noel Coward's stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, I wish you a lovely evening in, in Melbourne. Um, in, in despite well, it's the... a late, late evening now, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much for talking to me now. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for calling. And, uh, yes, we may meet in the future. I very much hope so. Okay. I know. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You just heard a special episode of Nobel Prize Conversations. For more listening, we think you'll enjoy our brand new bonus episode, where Adam reveals what really gets our laureates celebrating. You can hear it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.